All right, in this video we're going to graph the secant and cosecant functions and then just one transformation. Um, and I actually think these are kind of fun to graph. If you already know the sine and cosine functions, these are very quick to graph. So let's look at the secant and remember that the secant is 1 over the cosine. And again, we're going to mark off the same way we would mark off for a uh, cosine function. We're going to go from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. I'm going to graph a cosine function in green and just with open circles. So cosine has a max at 1, a min of negative 1, and the max occurs at the beginning so of the period. So we have a max at 0, x equals 0, a max at 2 pi, and then we have a min halfway. We have zeros at a quarter and 3 quarters of the way. And I'll continue, I'll do the same thing from negative 2 pi to 0. So a max at negative 2 pi, a min at negative pi, zeros at negative 3 pi over 2, and negative pi over 2. Whether you connect these, I mean, you don't want to connect them with a solid line, but if you want to use a broken line, you can. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. What we know right now is wherever cosine is equal to 0, because it's in the denominator, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and graph all of those in. Now, where I remember, I'm taking the reciprocal of every y value that there would that would occur on the cosine uh, function. So the reciprocal of one is one. So where cosine equaled one, secant is going to equal one. And so everywhere I have a one, I'm going to fill that in, fill that open circle in, so it's part of my graph. And the reciprocal of negative one is negative 1. So where cosine equaled negative 1, secant is going to equal negative 1. Now, where when you take the reciprocal of a very large number, um, you end up getting a smaller number. Like the reciprocal of 8 would be 1 8. The reciprocal of 10 would be 1 tenth. And then the reciprocal of very small numbers, numbers that would be close to 0, like 1 one hundredth, the reciprocal of that would be a hundred. So what happens is we're going to get uh, where we would have had an upside, almost looking like an upside down u for cosine, we're actually going to flip that and we're going to have, it almost looks like a u, and we're going to approach those asymptotes. And so this is going to be flipped and it's going to approach its asymptotes, and this is going to be flipped. This is going to be flipped. So this is the this is the graph of of your secant function. I have gone in and then I've lightly drawn in the cosine function. So again, hopefully, hoping you can understand what I what I just explained. That when you take the reciprocal of one, you get one. As the numbers get smaller and again, closer and closer to zero, their reciprocals are getting larger and they're, you know, the closer I get to zero, the larger my uh, reciprocal is going to be and you basically, that tends towards infinity. And so if you can graph a cosine uh, curve, you can graph a secant curve very easily. Now the period here, you can see that the cycle now is going to be one upside down, you know, one u and then an upside down u. So the the period for uh, secant and cosecant is also going to be 2 pi. The domain for secant is going to be the same as the domain for the tangent. Remember, the tangent is sine over cosine, and the secant is 1 over cosine. And we know that whenever the cosine is equal to 0, uh, we have a vertical asymptote. So these are values of x that are not in the domain. So our domain is going to be x cannot equal k pi over 2. k is an odd integer. What I'd like you to do is using the same idea that we used here is I'd like you to graph the cosecant curve by looking at the reciprocal of sine and then uh, you know give it a try and then turn the video back on and watch the solution. 
Alright, so I'm going to go ahead in and graph, I'm going to graph the sine curve because cosecant is 1 over sine. And I'll do that in the light green. I know I have zeros at the beginning, halfway, and at the end of a cycle. I know I have a max a quarter of the way and a min of negative 1 3 quarters of the way. That pattern is going to repeat itself. So we'll fill that in. If you would like to do the broken line and connect them, you may, but just remember that you cannot write it in as a solid line because that's not part of your graph. Your final graph is going to be the graph of cosecant. All right, so we're, we're going to take the reciprocal of all of these y values. So where we had zeros, we're now going to have vertical asymptotes. We'll go ahead and draw those in. Now I'll take the reciprocals of my ones and my one negative one. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1, reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. I'm going to fill those in and then we will just invert the original shape. The period equals 2 pi. The domain is x cannot equal k pi, in this case k is an integer. So to graph y equals 3 cosecant 2x, we want, it's actually the same as graphing 3 times 1 over the sine of 2x. And so what we're going to do is let's we're going to graph lightly the the sine of 2x. And we know that the 3 here is going to all of our values are going to be multiplied by 3. So we're going to we'll do a rough sketch and then we will do the we'll do the vertical stretch. And we'll graph this from 0 to 2 pi. So the period I'm going to graph the sine the sine function lightly in green. The period is now pi because we have 2x. Uh, zeros at the beginning and halfway and at the end of a period. A max of the quarter and a min three quarters of the way. And then if I took the reciprocal of that, we would then put our vertical asymptotes in. So generally what I would do is I would take the reciprocal first and then I would multiply that value by 3. So what's going to happen is instead of having my u you know, take the reciprocal of 1, which is negative 1. I mean, excuse me, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Then I would multiply that value by 3. So instead of being at 1, I'm going to be up 1, 2, 3. And at negative 1, I'm going to multiply that by 3. So that would give me negative 3. And so what we have is a, we have a cosecant function with a vertical stretch being stretched by 3. Now generally, you know, you will be not asked to graph transformations of the tan, cotan, secant, and cosecant, but you would be asked to do, a, like say, a graph matching. Um, I know technology eventually takes over, and so I feel like if you understand how to graph sine and cosine functions and all of their transformations, and you know the basic graphs of um, the quotient and reciprocal functions, that, you know, a graph matching will be as far as we'll go on those. Again, the domain here um, for this function, we've got to think what's going on here. Let's think about where these vertical asymptotes are. They are at 0, they're at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And so in this case, instead of saying x cannot equal, if I say k pi over 2 and I say k is an odd integer, that's going to get me these values right here. How do I get the 0, the pi, and the 2 pi? I let k equal an integer. So here is your domain. Let's see how that works. When k equals 0, we get 0 times pi over 2, which would be 0. 
when k equals 1, that would be 1 times pi over 2, which would give us pi over 2. When k equals 2, we'd get 2 times pi over 2, which is pi. And you can see, by adding those even integers, we're going to generate the, the zeros, the pi's, and the 2 pi's.